Wednesday's blessings, my beloved church family. Hear these beautiful and familiar words from 1 Corinthians 13. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. As for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will shall see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, and the greatest of these, is love. That passage is so often shared with us at moments of weddings and celebrations, most of the time talking about romantic love. But Paul scribes this beautiful chapter, this beautiful song to love, in the midst of a letter to the church at Corinth, the first letter that we have in his writings. And in this letter, he is addressing a church that is struggling. It is divided. It is contentious. People are vying for power over one another. It is not at all the picture of the church that Paul knows it should be. And so Paul begins to talk to them about the fact that they all need each other, that they are the body of Christ at work in the world, the resurrected, ascended, Pentecost body of Christ at work in the world. And in order for that body to work, as Paul paints a beautiful picture in chapter 12, every single part of the body, beloved in and of itself, must come together and work as a whole body. The hand needs the foot, and the foot needs the hand, and all the parts have to work together. And those, Paul says, that seem the least discreet parts of the body need to be held in esteem. And so as a response to that beautiful picture of the body at work, Paul describes the love that holds the body together. A love that, yes, at times is patient, and at times endures, but not a love that allows wrongdoings to continue time and time and time again. Not a love that causes pain and anguish for parts of that body, but not for others. And so as we wrestle this week with all that is happening in our culture, as we wrestle this week with all of the, the pain from the loss of life, George Floyd and others, as we wrestle with protests and riots and looting, and as we wrestle with images on our screen that are horrific, and seeing the head, of, head office of our country co-opting the Bible and the church for personal gain, 
let us hold these words and remind ourselves that we are the body of Christ. We are a body designed to work together to continue Jesus's ministry of justice and reconciliation for the world, and that we need each other, each of us precious, a unique part of that body. We must come together for the sake of those who have been lost. And so with all of these images now on social media and in the news of protests and riots and politicians, let us remember what it is that we are called to be acting for in our world. Let us remember George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Tony McDade, Ahmaud Arbery. These faces and the people who are calling out to them, calling out their name and being silenced, those are where we focus our attention these days as we care for those most in need in our world, as we care for those whose voices are being silenced and whose lives are being lost. Bishop Latrell Miller Easterling of the Baltimore Washington Annual Conference shared these words on social media on Tuesday morning. Now is the time, beloved. Either we are living our faith, which teaches that the greatest of all is love, or we are not. Now is the time. Now is the time. Either we believe that we are all created in the Imagio Day, or we do not. Now is the time. Now is the time. Either we believe there is no Jew or Greek, no slave or free, no male or female, or we do not. Now is the time. Now is the time. Either we embrace the Sermon on the Mount, or we do not. Now is the time. Now is the time. Either we believe Christ came for all, that all may have life, and have it to the full, or we do not. Now is the time. Now is the time. Now is the time. My family and God, now is the time. Let us join together in working through some of the curriculum and imagine no racism and learning more about dismantling racism and white privilege and implicit bias. Or, and, let us engage with several different books that we can offer one another in a book study and talk about race and racism, not as just as something that is individual acts, but as a system, as an institution that is killing people and belittling the lives of everyone. Now is the time. Faith, hope, and love abide. These three, and the greatest of these, is love. Is love. Now is the time.